Hi, I'm Stan Yan, and I'm going to show you the production of my page 5 of my zombie children's book, There's a Zombie in the Basement. I'll be inking blue line printouts of my planning pages with a Pentel pocket brush and some black pigmented pen I bought. The pocket brush is like a fountain pen with a flexible br fiber brush tip. It's what gives me those expressive lines. I've probably refilled this pen a hundred times and it works like it did day one. I love this. The Zig is something I just bought uh, that I'm experimenting with. This is just meant to give me a uniform line when I'm doing something like cross hatching or something like that. Now, as you may have previously seen in one of my previous updates, um, I've printed out several pages uh, in blue line of each of my pages so that uh, I can ink them. Um, on separate layers. So right now you can see that uh, I'm inking the headboard and since they really don't overlap with one another I'm going to go ahead and over um, ink the footboard on this uh, same page and that way I can insert everything, scan them all and put them all on uh, different layers which will help me immensely. Now, using the zig, I can uh, actually just kind of do these little scribbles that make the headboard uh, look a little bit patinaed or corroded, kind of give it a rusty look. Um, and then everything else, especially the outlines, I'm using the Pentel pocket brush. So here I am now uh, inking Milo, my main character, on a separate sheet of paper. Now using a light box, I'm going to go ahead and um, take these inked drawings and trace them through onto sheets of watercolor paper that I'm going to be doing ink washes on. Um, so I'm going to try something different this time. Before I actually used uh, watercolor, but this time I'm going to actually use Black India ink and create washes. Now um, when I like the mixture, I'll go ahead and store them so I can use them later and uh, I'll just keep adding more and more ink to make darker washes here.
Now once these are dry, I'm going to go ahead and take my kneaded eraser and erase all the pencil marks back out. And then I'm going to show you my scanning process. So the first thing I'm going to show you is me scanning my black line art. So once I've got it scanned in, and I do so in uh, RGB color, I uh, go ahead and uh, apply a thresh threshold adjustment to push everything to black or white. And then I'll go back in and convert it back to a CMYK. And once I've done that, I have these channels um, that I'll use to um, duplicate the black channel, uh, which I will use to create a um, copyable line art, uh, which I'll move over to my main um, page file. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and convert the uh, background to a layer and create a new background layer on top of that, um, and then just fill it in with white. So that's the paper color. And then on the top layer, I'm going to go ahead and create an ink layer. Now I'll go up to Select and Black Copy. And you can see it masks off an area. Um, and then I'll just fill it with black. So that's my new line art. So I'm going to go back to my original planning file. And we're going to go ahead and... Um, um, reduce the opacity of everything and I'll go back and with all of these line image files I'm gonna go ahead and select all copy and I'm just gonna go ahead and in uh, and I'll go ahead and paste them in and do a few size adjustments so I'm gonna go ahead and move them and uh, using command T to transform I'm going to go ahead and um, lock the proportions, click on the percentages, and I'll just use my arrow keys to go up and down um, to make this slightly larger, and then I'll click on it, and using my arrow or move um, icon, I'll just nudge it back and forth and click apply. So the next thing I should have probably done was go ahead and add a bunch of uh, groups or folders for the different layers that I'm going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and do like the footboard, Milo, um, the mom, the dad. So let me show you uh, this again. We're going to go ahead and copy the mom image over. So I'm selecting all, copy, and then we're going to go to paste which I don't think I showed you, I probably command V'd it last time. And uh, I'll change the name of this layer to inks, and then I'll do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and move her, and uh, again, go up to image, or I think edit, transform. Now you'll see that the entire file, once I've put everything in, it's kind of a mess. It, everything kind of overlaps and you can see through everything. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you two different ways to um, to go ahead and mask something off. So I went ahead and selected all and then using my magic wand mask tool uh, on subtractive mode I'm clicking on the layer that has the footboard and uh, so I'm trying to select all of the areas inside of the footboard. So once I think I've got a, a hold of, uh, of it, I'm going to go ahead and contract a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, uh, move it below the inks layer and call it flats. And uh, using my paint bucket with a white ink. I'm just going to go ahead and paint bucket in there and there you go. You shouldn't be able to see through the the footboard anymore. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, go ahead and uh, import the uh, 
um, ink washes that I did for Milo. So things will be a little bit less confusing. I'm going to go ahead and change the opacity on the other layers to something like 50% or so. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the, the pencil tool, which is kind of an all or none or a non-anti-aliased for those of you that uh, know what that means. Um, and kind of create a flat. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use this bright orange color to show you what I'm filling in. And I like to do this sometimes just uh, so that I can make sure that everything is straight in my mind as I'm uh, going ahead and, and coloring things in. So I'm outlining this so that I can paint bucket the whole thing in uh, because the image itself is not completely closed off when I inked it. So there we go. This is an area I'm gonna work with now. We'll just go ahead and clean it up just a tad here. And then I'll, I'll show you what's going to happen next. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase uh, something on the ink layer because I didn't realize that was actually his mom's arm. It wasn't a part of the bed. So uh, I want to make sure that mom shows through there. So I saved all the scans as their own file. So I'm going to go ahead and retrieve the um, ink wash file. Now using my polygonal lasso tool, I'll go ahead and copy and then go back to my uh, um, image here and I'll paste and using transformation I'll resize it holding down the shift key so that uh, it does it in proportion and I'll go ahead and fit it in there and apply it so the next thing I'm going to do is just do a little bit of nudging and resizing. So I'm going to go down to my flats layer and use my magic wand, select it, and I'm going to invert it. And, and then going back to my um, tones layer, I'm going to trim away the excess. Now you can see uh, I made a little bit of an error there, so I filled it in with my pencil tool. So now I'm going to use the layer that I had um, as my flats as kind of a, a filter or a color layer. So sampling one of my previous pages with an ink dropper, I'm going to go back and paint in on this layer that I've uh, change to um, a color mode, if you can see up there at the top. I don't really like that color. I want it to be a little bit more orange. And let's see if I can find a skin tone here that I like. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's a little bit yellow for my tastes. Might tweak it a little bit. Let's just go ahead and select one of the presets that I have in my swatches. Alright, and let's go ahead and do the blanket. So the rest of it I'm going to bucket in. Eh, that's a little green. So I think I might do the same thing. So I'm, I'm just experimenting with this because this is kind of the first time I've done this. Um, so we're all learning this together. Now this is a, um, a nice little plugin you can get for free from Adobe called Cooler where you can s select a color and then uh, create, in this case I'm creating a complementary color scheme so it gives me five different colors that I'm going to use to create um, uh, filters. So, um, and then on another layer here, uh, instead of doing colored pencil on the original layer that, uh, uh, on the original watercolor paper, I'm going to try to simulate it here on the screen and see if I like the way it looks. This will make it a little bit easier for me to 
choose colors based on you know some of the profiles that they create for me through Cooler. That's basically my approach. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to the final product here. So if you'd like to see more about this project, uh, come visit me at stanyan.me.